Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday and today I have a mini art journal book for you with five pages. I'm going to do a very quick flip through in the beginning so you can see what I'm going for and then I'm going to show you how I made all these pages and how I put this little book together. I'm going for a vintage theme today and I call this little journal Hats and Wings since I kind of have a little theme going on with my people and the pet included in the pages. You can make even more pages and stick them on the other side of this little book and today I'm going to start by showing you what you need to create this little journal and everything is really inexpensive plus all the supplies are really essential if you are just starting art journaling. So first of all I'm going to use images from these pages. These are pages with lots of vintage elements that you can cut out with your scissors, put them together and create different scenes. All the images do have a white border all around and you can cut out around it if you want to make your life easier. Otherwise, you can go exactly along the design, which is something that I like to do since I don't mind fuzzy cutting. Each of these is less than a dollar, so I think you will have a blast playing with all those different images, putting different scenes together. For my pages today, I will also work with stencil and a couple of stamps. All of them are very versatile and can be used throughout your art journaling journey again and again. Now the way that I like to unpackage is to open a slit from the top. I don't like getting extra plastic sleeves, I just keep the original packaging. And look what I absolutely love about this stencil. That border here is perfect and although I have hundreds of stencils, I have to say that, I'm not gonna lie, this is something that I didn't have up to now. Plus you get so many different versatile designs in this uh, stencil that is really a must. Another essential uh, stamp that you need to have in your arsenal if you are starting art journaling is a text stamp. It's really versatile and can be used throughout your backgrounds. I like this one because it is clear and you can see where you're stamping. Plus it is quite of a big stamp so you can cover up a bigger area easier. And it has a small font which is something that I like. And the other big stamp can also add texture. Now here is one which is perfect for borders and you will see me using these two stamp sets throughout the pages today so you can see how they look. One of my favorites from this stamp set is this one of course which has kind of the same design as uh, the stencil that I showed you previously but you still get many more borders that you can play with. I believe that the stencil is less than $6 and you can use it again and again throughout your adventures in journaling. and those stamp sets are about $10 so I think that they are a great price for everyone who is starting out. For my pages I'm going to work on watercolor paper. I like this pad by Art by Marlene. It is a nice thick watercolor paper that I have been using for a while now and I know that it takes uh, mediums nicely. I like the size of it, it looks uh, pretty much as the front panel of a card, so you can easily make a journal or turn these panels into cards. Now I'm going with 5 pages, since I think that I can fit those in a less than 30 minutes video today, and uh, from the coloring of the backgrounds I'm going to play with distress oxides. When you are going for a vintage look, you can never go wrong with oxides, since they never dry super bright and they give that chalky old finish. I have already picked a few colors and I'm going to do combinations of two for all these pages and every time I'm making a page I'm going to tell you which colors exactly I'm using. I'm just working inside the box that I get from packaging and uh, here I'm using wild honey and fired brick. I'm going to move quickly with the backgrounds. Since they are just backgrounds, you will see that they're going to look nice at the end. I did spray a little bit of water to help those uh, colors blend better and I'm going to move on to the next panel. This time I'm going with speckled egg and shabby shutters. As I am working through those pages, I'm going to work with warm colors or uh, cool colors, but in any case I'm just mixing two colors in every one of those panels. And of course at this stage I don't even know which are going to be the focal points. I'm just having fun creating backgrounds. Now that was the new color, salvaged patina, and I did mix that with vintage photo. And let's move on to the fourth one. This time I'm going again with salvaged patina, but uh, with shabby shutters. Just because I want to see how this combination works. 
And finally, for the last background, I'm going with fired brick and vintage photo. So I have a first layer of color on all my backgrounds. I'm going to make sure that everything is dry and you will see that they are not going to dry as bright as they look at the moment. And of course you can leave them to air dry if you want to and in the meantime you can cut out some images from the pages. However, I'm too impatient. I just want to see how it looks. So I have to use my heat gun and make sure that everything is dry so that I can move on to the next steps for my backgrounds. So here is what I have up to now and now let's play with the stencils. For the stencils this time I'm not going to use any paste. I'm just going completely flat with inking. And just because I'm really really in love with this uh, border that looks as if I have teared off the page from a spiral uh, binded book, I'm going over it with black ink. This is um, Distress ink by the way, but you can use any black ink that you like. And I'm going to repeat the same effect on all of my pages on one side. Now, since I have all those different uh, patterns on this stencil, I'm going to use all of them in uh, my pages. So again, with my blending tool going over some areas, I'm never creating rectangles or perfect circles. I'm just going completely organic here. I don't uh, mind if I end up having some smudges here and there or if something isn't perfect or even if the stencil moves. If there are any mistakes or imperfections, just embrace them. This is only a background. After sticking on top the focal points and adding all the extra elements like the quotes, etc., you will not be able to see what was going on and all the mistakes and imperfections on the background. We are just going to play with stencils and with stamping later on to add some interest back there but at the same time it's not going to be very busy. Now notice that here I'm going with black for all the images of the stencil. This is something that I don't normally do as I don't want my background to be very vibrant and uh, however in this case it does work. I'm not adding too much just notice that I'm mainly adding three elements here and there. Again on all the pages I do add that edge on one side when I also made sure that I used all the different uh, designs of the stencil throughout the pages so you can have a chance to see how they look. Although these are going to be separate pages, however, they are going to be part of the same project. And that's why I like to repeat some elements on all the pages, like this edge, for example, with black ink. This way, the whole project is going to look more coherent at the end. If you are just starting out with a journaling and you don't have any stencils, I think this is a great one to go with because it has um, designs that can be used again and again. They are really versatile. Now what I'm doing is um, darkening up the edges. This is something that I always like to do. It helps uh, to bring the eye towards the center of the page. For that I'm using my number one favorite and most used uh, color, which is vintage photo. And you can never go wrong when you are working on a vintage uh, look and feel project with vintage photo, obviously. Now, I did sped up the video, but uh, in any case, I'm doing that really quickly. I don't pay attention to the blending. And you can probably notice that I have splotches there. Nothing looks smooth, but it really doesn't matter. This is not a card. This is an art journal background. And you will see that at the end, at the finished photos, you won't be able to see any of those splotches. Now let's move on to the next step and this time I'm going to do some stamping. I'm going with a text stamp and I will use my archival link for that. I am using a stamping block today, but I am also making sure that I don't stamp complete squares. I just like to have things organic. Maybe it is easier for you if you are just starting out to stamp with just with your fingers, without a stamping block, just to make sure that you will end up with imperfections. By the way, the stamping block that I am using works for this technique just because it is very thin and I can easily bend it so that I don't end up with perfect rectangles. And what we are doing is adding visual texture at the background. I do follow the same steps on all my backgrounds. I do make an effort to keep the style coherent throughout all the pages. And now I'm moving on to the other stamp set, the one with the borders. So first I'm going with the row of uh, little dots just adding mainly at the edges and I will repeat the same process on all the pages again.
And then I will move on to another stamp of these borders. I'm going with the row of tickets and again I'm going to do some stamping on all the pages one more time. And after all this stamping and all the stenciling that we did on these backgrounds, you cannot really see anymore the imperfections that I had from the quick blending around the edges. It's really fun because the more layers you add, the less you see of what is going on at the background. However, the texture, the visual texture and the interest is still there. You can go ahead and do more stamping if you like. I'm going to stop here. I decided that's enough. And now I'm going to do one of my favorite techniques. I'm going to add white splashes. For that you can go either with white paint that you dilute with water. You can even go with gesso diluted with water. I'm going with a paint uh, spray and I'm just going to use the nozzle and go for it. The white splashes that you add are not going to stay super white and vibrant since they are going to react with the stress oxide inks underneath. However, they do add that extra detail that I wanted. So here are all the backgrounds, a close up on all of them. I'm going to leave those aside to let those splashes dry completely and I'm going to work on the focal points. Now the way I work with those pages is just browsing through them and stop on whatever draws my eye. So here I like this lady and I think that uh, the lady is screaming for wings. And I also even have an idea for my second page. So anyway, let's start with the first page. I'm going to do my fuzzy cutting here. I like to separate roughly the image that I want to work with from the main page. And then I put on the music and just do my fuzzy cutting, taking my time. Fuzzy cutting is part of the process of my art journaling and I really enjoy that too, so I never rush. Usually I have my favorite playlist on or sometimes I even listen to audiobooks while I'm doing the fuzzy cutting. The truth is that the images aren't so difficult to cut out. Always make sure to hold the scissors still and move the actual paper. This is going to make fuzzy cutting really easier for you. And take your time, it looks as I'm doing everything super quickly in the video, but really note, this is in fast forward. If there is white space, like uh, between her arms and her body, in uh, this example, you can even use uh, your uh, craft knife, but I never do that, I just go along and cut it out. It doesn't matter if you cut through the image, at the end of the day you are going to glue it down and no one will ever know. Now that I know which is going to be my focal point, I'm going to show you how I choose on which of the backgrounds I'm going to stick it on. So let's start with the image first, which is in black and white. So this means that it's going to look beautiful in pretty much all of my backgrounds. It really stands out no matter where I place it. But when I add the wings here, for example, they don't stand out as much because they have similar colors as the background. So I think I would better go with one of the bluish ones or the greenish ones. You see that they really stand out against the background even better. So randomly I picked one of the greenish ones and I'm going to glue everything down. Now in terms of composition I don't usually like to have my focal points at the center. So I usually shift them on the right or on the left doesn't really matter. In this case I'm going to align her suitcase with the edge of my uh, panel and at the same time I'm going to have some wings coming out of the page which is something that I usually like to have focal points come going out so that I can cut them out. It looks more interesting as if there is something going on outside of the page. One trick that I usually do with my cutouts is to tint them slightly with the same color. This way they look more coherent and they are going to look as if they are part of the same image. So here I'm using a blending tool that is black to get rid of the white edge. And I also did another blending tool, this one with a vintage photo, all around here, just a touch. Only tint them at the edges. This is a really small detail but really makes a huge difference on breaking all the different elements that you cut out from different pages together. They look as if they are part of the same project at the end. When you are having uh, people who are standing, if you don't want them to look as if they are floating, a good idea is to add a piece of paper at the bottom. Here I just used a piece of uh, washi tape. 
You can also cut out anything that goes out of the page or you can leave it as it is if you like to have things sticking out. And now it's just a matter of adding a quote for my page. I always like to go with quotes. This time I went with the journey is the destination. I'm using a sticker booklet by Tim Holtz for today, but you can print out your stickers or you can even stamp them or write them down with your own handwriting. I usually like to cut the phrases in smaller pieces. And then the final step is to bring in my white gel pen. With the white gel pen I'm going to outline the quote and I'm also going to add some highlights here and there on all the cutouts. When you have your sprays out and the box and you go for all that mess, you can make many of those pages and create lots and lots of backgrounds. This way you will have a bunch of them ready to go. And then whenever throughout the week you have some time to be creative without spending too much time, you can just cut out a couple of images, stick them down and you have a page ready to go. Another thing that you can do if you want to is to go with a black pen and outline the cutouts. It, this is not something that I usually do. I just uh, normally forget about it or even I don't really care. But in any case, if you want to do it, just go for it. It is a detail that really helps the cutouts to pop against the background even more. So here is my first page all ready to go. For the next pages I will repeat the same steps but I'm not going to go through them in detail. So again I'm using my scissors to fuzzy cut images from those vintage pages. And then I did tint them all with vintage photo as well as got rid of that white edge. So here I decided to go with this funny guy and uh, in the same uh, vintage page there is also a moustache as well as a hat. You can separate him completely. I'm going to use him as a photo, make my life easier when it comes to fuzzy cutting. And in this case, I like that white border all around the photo. I'm going to tint it with vintage photo, so it's not going to stay as bright. But at the same time, I think it adds a lovely frame, so I am keeping it. So here you can see I have a bunch of images that I cut out. All of them are from the, from the vintage pages. And uh, it is time to put my page together. I did use my crocodile to add a couple of holes wherever it was needed instead of fighting with my scissors. And this is where I had the idea to go with the theme for this mini vintage project. So although all the pages are going to be vintage, they are going to have a theme. I'm calling this one Wings and Hats. So all my people and pets used throughout the pages are going to have either a hat, a wing or both of them. Don't ask me why, I just come up with such ideas while I'm working on pages. And I think that it made it even more fun to put together as I was trying to follow that theme. The face of this guy makes me laugh and I did had to add a moustache on him as well as a hat at the top. And I went with one of the quotes from uh, the sticker booklet by Tim Holtz that says I want to behave but there are too many other options. And I think it really matches this set design beautifully. To embellish my page a little bit more I did cut out a few tags, a couple of tickets and I'm just uh, layering them. I also wanted to add some extra texture, that's why I tied a little thread at the end of the tag. And I'm going to stick down my quote, again cutting it into smaller phrases, and do my thing with my white gel pen. Here are some close-up photos on this page. And let's move on to the third page for today. Again, I did my fuzzy cutting. I do have a guy. I have more elements like bulbs, for example, to dress up my page. And uh, I'm using my crop tile again wherever I need to add some uh, uh, holes. I'm going to stick him down. And again, I'm not going to stick him at the center of the page, just a little bit off towards one of the sides. And it's really easy to put these pages together. The only time consuming part is just fuzzy cutting out the images, but they are really fun to put together and create your little scenes. So this one here kind of has a steampunky look as well as vintage. I'm going to stick down a couple of bubbles coming from the top. And also I did cut out a few numbers. For the quote on this page, I went with ordinary people can do extraordinary things. 
After sticking them down, again I'm going to bring in my white gel pen, outline the quote, do the highlighting just like I do always. And here are some close-up photos on the third page for today. Now, in this little mini art journal, I do have four pages with people, so I do have to make a page with a pet. And I couldn't uh, resist to this adorable dog. He is wearing a hat as well, so he's perfect for my theme. Again, I didn't want him to float, so I did cut out a, um, a ruler that was included in one of the pages. And of course, I'm going to give him wings. You can have some dimension if you like with the wings. I do add glue only at the base so you can have uh, the tips lifted a little bit. Then to make my composition more interesting, I did cut out more elements from those vintage pages, like a clock for example, or a little tag. I do have some uh, vintage um, dried flowers and a few stars, and I'm just going to stick one on top of the other, creating layers and interest. For gluing everything down today, I'm using my white glue, and this is a new to me glue that I have been using for a couple of weeks now. This is the Burley Art glue. It is nice because it is um, quite runny and it has a very fine tip, so it is perfect for detail. Uh, sticking down images. I don't want to use my gel matte medium here since it is probably going to make a mess with the background because any medium that you add on top of that distress oxide ink is going to react with it. So it is a good choice to go with a glue that is not going to create a mess. And um, the fun part about this glue is that it, when if it oozes out, it does dry clear and it's not shiny at all. So this is uh, one of the um, elements that I am looking for when I am trying to choose a new glue for my projects. Anyway, always be on the lookout for the presence of wonder. One of my favorite things to do, and I find a really big joy in it, is to try and match sticker quotes with pages. And it is just like magic, there is always something in those sticker books that fits perfectly with any page that I make. And here are some close-up photos on my wonder dog with his wings and his hat. And finally, let's move on to the last page for today. Here I'm using a photo with a lovely lady. And since this is uh, all about hats and all the images that I have do have a hat on top, you can go with unexpected hats. You can use anything on top of them. Here I'm trying to use a flower in instead of a hat. And uh, I decided to go with a bigger one. I'm just going to cut it out slightly smaller. And I like when I have elements going outside of frames or images, just like here. So I was really happy with the result. I am going to turn it around until I find the perfect position. And then of course I'm going to get rid of the white edge by using black ink. I'm going to tint slightly all the images with vintage photo to bring them all together and stick everything down. In those vintage pages you will find a huge variety of wings to work with. There are many many butterflies for example and even angel wings. So I did go with very small ones here just for the fun of it and I did I use the one with the polka dots. So I am going to embellish this page with the rest of the big roses and uh, for the quote I went with Be You Bravely, Fearless, Independent and Original. And finally, just like always, I'm going to grab my white gel pen and add some highlights. Outline the quotes as well as add highlights, mainly of the flowers. It really makes a difference. It helps them pop even more. So here are some close-up photos on the last page for today. And before I say goodbye, I'm going to show you how I put this little book together by using the disc bound system. So I do have this uh, happy planner punch and I did punch it out panels of cardstock that are bigger than my actual panel so that I end up having a border. Now you can use black cardstock for your black panels 
or just use white paper that you have on hand and color it in with your paints. I like that this way I don't have to punch holes on my actual project and at the same time it keeps the whole book nice and neat because you cannot see the back of the pages which are quite dirty for all the spraying and working on top of them. There is a huge variety of discs in the market. You can find metallic ones like the ones that I'm using today. You can find plastic ones in different colors and sizes. So here is a quick flip through on all the pages that I made for today. I hope that this video was helpful, that you had fun and that you got inspired. Just like always, you will find a full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area. Thank you all so much for watching today. Don't forget to leave me a comment and to like, it really helps. And I'll see you all next time.